Hi, hello again, friendly zoo goers. Now, before I do anything else, um, y'all have probably noticed that you can see me now. Um, this is, I guess, an attempt to make my videos higher quality. Um, so, you know, I'd be happy to hear any feedback um, as to if you like seeing my lovely mug. Um, but I also found my uh, old overlays that I use for streaming. So for this first little portion of video, um, I am going to be here, you know, providing commentary like I usually am. But now I get to talk with my face and my hands instead of just my voice. Um, anywho, today on the docket, um, we have finished the bear section of the zoo. Um, barring a couple odds and ends, like this little section right here by the panda habitat, it's looking rather bare. I'm running out of opportunities to use the bear puns, so I'm going to, you know, get my fill while I can. But anyway, uh, I need to fill that out. Um, and then I need to put some sort of signage signifying just the, the bear area specifically. But, excuse me, um, we are not going to worry about that today. What today? We are going to get started on the next section of the carnivora um, tree, uh, and that is going to be our Mustelids building. Um, Mustelids, uh, in the game, uh, includes the giant river otter, Asian small claw otter, and the wolverine. Um, however, because the giant, uh, because the giant river otter is, uh, or I guess a giant, just giant otter, um, because the giant otter is the largest um, in both actual stature and in group size, um, then this whole building is going to be, uh, the size is going to be dependent on how much space they need. Um, so, uh, what I'm thinking is a circular habitat, I'm probably going to put the building right here, um, hopefully that's enough room for it, I am having concerns that it isn't. Um, but. You know, we'll see. We'll see how legitimate those concerns are. Um, but there's going to be in the center. It's going to be a circular habitat uh, for the giant otter here, and then it's going to be flanked on either side by the um, Asian small clawed otter and the wolverine. Um, the European badger is also part of that group, but we already have a European badger habitat elsewhere in the zoo, so we are not going to be adding them here. Uh, let's see here. So we are going to be having 15 adults as well as a number of children, um, of juveniles. So we're going to assume 10, uh, so that might be, might be shy, but, you know, better too much than not enough. Um, so we're going to need a total area requirement of roughly 2,300 um, square meters. Uh, I'm thinking that in reality, it's probably going to be closer to 3,000. Um, I always like to add extra because of any rocks or trees or buildings or galleries that might cut into it. Although the way that I'm planning on doing the galleries, the galleries are not, or should not present that problem. Now what we do need to do is, like I said, what, 2,300? So 2,300? 2,300? divided by 3.14, which is, you know, our rounded variation of pi. Uh-huh, and then square root. Okay, meaning that our radius of this here circle needs to be 27. 27 meters. We are going to bump that up to, we are going to bump that up to, um, the 28, just so it's a multiple of four, um, which makes it easier to, you know, work with in terms of using the grid. Um, but yeah, we're going to start with our little circle, and then we're just going to build the building. Um, I don't know how long it's going to take to build the building. If the building takes a long time to build, then it might just be the building. Um, anywho, without further ado, we are going to hop into our time lapse, and while I will be providing commentary this time around as well, then I'm also going to be trying to put in some music, because upon extensive reading, I have found out that if I use the Planet Zoo soundtrack, that's actually legal. Um, so, without further ado, let's get started. Um.
Welcome back. Now, when I began, uh, when I began work on this habitat, I was blissfully unaware of just how long it would take to complete it. Um, I have yet to edit the clips together yet, so I um, I don't know how 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 long you will have had to have been watching up until this point. But what I can promise you is that I will not be using my standard time six speed because that was at least at least four and a half hours. But alas, the river giant otter habitat is finished. Um, now I am sure if you've been watching up until this point, you've noticed that there's a very big building that is, for the most part, very empty. Um, um so I'm going to give you a tour, and then I'm going to give you a little talk through as to as to what. Uh, oh, that's not good. All right, well we're going to give the tour in pause so that the grizzly bears don't kill each other. So one of my deer died, which is upsetting. Um, but anywho, honestly though, that's. So kind of, kind of, I'm pretty, pretty happy with that. Just because I can release him to the wild and hopefully get a get a little get a pretty penny. I really hope that a bunch of audio nonsense didn't just happen there. There might have been an echo, but it shouldn't happen again because I turned my volume down on my speakers. Anywho, um, this is the building for the family Mustelidae. Those of you who do not know, Mustelidae includes, uh, let's see here, otters, obviously. Um, so, be the giant otter and the small clawed otter, both inside this building. Goodness. But other Mustelids include, but are not limited to, badgers and the wolverine. Um, Meaning that the other two um, mustelids in this game are the European Badger and the Wolverine. Just said it. Um, but I already have European Badger habitat. So that means that there are going to be two other habitats in here. One on this left wing and one on this right wing. Obviously, those are pretty big spaces for, um, for those habitats. So there's also going to be some other things on the other side. Um, I'm thinking a restaurant here. And then probably a little staff area back here, um, which don't worry. This this ugly path to connect it to that staff area is not permanent. Um, but anyway, I uh, this idea came to me uh, maybe a week ago about like this general layout um, for the Mustelids building. Um, and originally, <laughs> I thought it was gonna be able to fit like in this little corner. <laughs> Uh, how wrong I was. Um, this building is like three times the size that I was anticipating it being, um, but it is finished, or at least the basic skeleton of the building is finished. It's looking pretty bare on the outside. Um, I, I can still say that. I can still use that pun because the grizzly bear was up there just now. Um, but yeah, we have a circular habitat with viewing, you know, 360 degree viewing. Um, this viewing gallery is pretty bland right now. Um, there's definitely going to be some donation boxes, some benches, just, you know, a bunch of guest facilities and whatnot on this side. Um, and then we have our underwater viewing gallery cave. Now, terraforming is a particular weak point that I have in this game, um, as you can see by this very wonky path that genuinely looks like a challenging hiking trail just to get down here. But once you're down here, once you're down here, you are right here. With our with our friends, with our friends is Antonio, Antonio, I believe Maria was another one, yeah. And then we have two more that are that are either that are swimming around here somewhere. Uh, yeah, like right here, Ricardo. Um, I'm not sure where the other one is, but anyway. Um, overall, though, I'd say I'm genuinely very pleased with how this one turned out. Um, I they have 100% coverage, which is something that I didn't know was possible. Um, but we've got, you know, two feeding platforms um, just because they're pretty, they live in pretty big groups. Um, although we do have sufficient space, sufficient traversable walking area, swimming area, and deep water area 
um, for these animals in this lovely little habitat. Most of their enrichment is floating here in the water, although we do have like a sprinkler and a water jet and stuff that I added afterwards because I realized that their toy enrichment wasn't fully met. Of course, I might have to go back and add more. I honestly don't remember if the enrichment needs to go up. Um, if they go up as the number of animals in there increases or not, it would make sense that they do. Um, I also included this little area right here. Um, this almost, it's, you know, I, I didn't even put any hard shelter. Um, just because, I mean, come on, that they're inside. Um, <laughs> But, I don't know, I did kind of have some flashbacks of, um, of the gray seal habitat, which they are always, like, always stressed out. Um, and I've taken a couple of measures to try to reduce the problem, but, as you can see, um, you know, uh, to, to, with limited success. Um, their stress isn't sustained, which is why I don't have, like, protesters. They'll just get stressed out for a little bit, and they'll move somewhere, and they'll get de-stressed. But anyway, I didn't want that to happen um, with the giant otters. So I put this little, this little, uh, I guess this little, like, cove in the middle, um, surrounded by uh, foliage. And the idea behind this was twofold. It was to, one, give them a private area where hopefully they can de-stress. Um, this guy isn't stressed at all, so that's, you know, that's good. Um, of course, I don't think any of them are right now. Um, but then also, I really wanted to, because it's such a big habitat, and because there's no real, like, viewing galleries that poke into the habitat like I do pretty often, um, then I wanted to basically try to keep the animals on the perimeter whenever they're not trying to hide uh, and sleep, you know. Um... So, I put all these impassable trees and plants and rocks and stuff like that um, in the hopes that they would be kind of drawn to the outside where they can actually be seen by the guests. Um, yeah, I also used the Amazon um, color for the water. Um, it looks really, really dirty and kind of gross, but I, at the same time, though, I also think it kind of fits the habitat. I might change it um, just for my own peace of mind at a later date. But for the time being though, it's what I'm it's what I'm gonna be sticking with. Um anyway, I'm sure this video has been incredibly long, even even with the additional speed added to the time lapse. So without further talking, um I am going to go ahead and cut this one here. Um like and subscribe. Thank you for tuning in. And I very much